Hi, and welcome to episode 8 of Girlfriends Knitting. It is Thursday, March 14th, I believe, 2012. I am Carolyn, also Caw Shirley on Plurk and Ravelry. And I'd like to start off today by talking about, first of all, the fact that I look terrible. This is my homage to the pajama week of podcasters from last week, so I'm still in my pajamas this morning. However, um, I know I look like I just woke up, and that's because I did. And I did not record in my pajamas last week when it was pajama week because, well, I didn't figure Darren and Amy would appreciate me being in my pajamas when we went to lunch and did our podcast together. I hope y'all enjoyed that podcast from last week. I loved making it. I had such a blast meeting them and visiting with them, going to lunch with them, recording the bonus episode for their podcast, Knitting in Circles. If you haven't been watching that, you really should check it out. It is great. And so I just want to thank them for that. On a second news and notes for this week, I want to show you something I got in Biloxi. It's called Y'all Twins. And you have to say it with a southern accent. Y'all Twins. And it's Catherine and Margaret King. And let's see if I can point out who is who. This one is Margaret. And this one is Catherine. And I know that, not because the book says so. It might. I haven't read all of it yet. I've only read several chapters. But because Catherine and Margaret are actually really good friends of mine. Cat and Margaret. And this is a book that they wrote about growing up um, in the 1950s in Oxford, Mississippi. And Oxford is one of my absolute favorite places. It's where I went to college. And it is where I taught school for several years at the university there and this book is wonderful they write it in first person but the first person switches from one chapter to the next so sometimes it's cat talking in first person sometimes it's margaret talking in first person and one of the beginning chapters is them meeting william faulkner who lived in oxford at the time and they had of course they're young kids they had no idea who he was or that that was anything special so, this is a book that's currently on sale. I, being wonderful friends with Kat and Margaret, got an autographed copy. So, I'm super excited about that. So, if you are interested at all, you know any twins in your family interested about Oxford, Mississippi or William Faulkner, I highly recommend y'all check out this book by Kat and Margaret King. And, like I said, they are wonderful friends of mine, but the writing is, is really well done as well. So that's the other thing I wanted to mention on news and notes. And I'm very excited today because it is going to be my parade of FOs. I have gotten so much done. I was talking about how I was knitting on my Hogwarts Express. Let me get it turned around correctly. My Hogwarts Express. And here it is. You see my beautiful little owls? It did come out wonderful in the variegated yarn. I can put it on a little bit. Um, I love how it looks. I kind of wear it to the side with a shawl pin. And I was knitting on it while I was at the conference. And then about halfway through one of the presentations, I actually was able to finish it. And so then I went back up to my room, got my scissors, cut the end, wove in the ends, put it on, actually changed so I could wear something that was matching it, put it on and went back downstairs for the next presentation. And so everybody was laughing about the fact that I had, um, was wearing something I had been knitting on earlier that day. So that was lots of fun. So there is my Hogwarts Express. I'm so excited. If any of y'all have been knitting on it, please post pictures on our Ravelry group. I'd love to see them. Diane from Knittables was where I first saw this pattern. Hers is posted on there. Diane was so sweet and posted hers up there as inspiration for us, and it is beautiful. I'll try to post pictures of mine up there. I don't have any of me wearing it yet, but I do have a few where I laid it out on the bed in Biloxi. Um, I also have gotten a new camera for my parents, and so I'm very excited about that, and so I'll be able to take some really great pictures of it here very soon. So this is going to be a parade of FOs, and I love a parade. 
and this is going to be my F.O. parade because not only did I get the Hogwarts Express done, I also decided to finish up a few little loose ends. So do you remember this? monstrosity from one of the very first episodes. This is my Wisteria shawl collar sweater in Sensations Rainbow Acrylic. And I talked about how it being rainbow acrylic, um, it actually doesn't drape very well at all. So the shoulders kind of puff up. When I'm wearing it, I look like a linebacker. But I do think that I sewed um, it together very well and it is completely done. Everything is sewn on. Everything is sewed up. The ends are woven in. I apologize. I don't remember who it was, but one of our girlfriends on the group said, because it's acrylic, wash and dry it in the washing machine and dryer. See what that does for it. So I haven't had a chance to do that yet, but hopefully I can get that done um, this week and see what that does. It's too warm now. It really is spring here in Mississippi. The flowers are out, the pollen is crazy, and so my allergies are through the roof. So I'm not going to be wearing it anytime soon, I don't think. But I do think that it'll be fun to throw on and wear when I'm cold in the winter here next winter. So I am happy with it. I'm not going to do the vest modification like I had talked about. I'm going to leave it as a sweater. And even if all I do is say, this is my first sweater, and hang it in the closet, and it just stays there for years and years. This is my first sweater. So that's the second F.O. because it is now officially a finished object. Then let me remind you of my Cole Strawn. And I knit it out of wool of the Andes in Cole, which is why I called it my Cole Strawn. And it was supposed to be for my brother. My brother was the one who picked out the pattern, he picked out the yarn, and then me not doing a gauge swatch and also not measuring his head ended up with one for my eight-year-old nephew. I now have one for my brother. It is completely knitted. The only thing I have to do, and I'm going to do that this afternoon, is cut out the brim and sew the brim in. So what you do and I may record myself doing this as sort of a little show and tell. You flip it inside out. This is probably hard to see on this gray yarn. But you flip it inside out and you sew it around. And then when you get around to the side that you want the brim on, you just put the plastic in between the two layers. And then you just keep sewing it around. And you don't bind off. You actually sew the live stitches into where you began the rib. So his hat will be done this afternoon. And I said I wasn't going to mail them until I finished the Spider-Man hat for my other nephew, Beck. Because, you know, you can't send a hat to dad and brother if you don't send a hat to the other brother. Spider-Man hat, it looks super small, but it is not. It actually can fit my head as a little skull cap. Ta-da! So it certainly will fit my six-year-old nephew's head. He wanted the red and white and black. I know my hair probably is a disaster now, but that's okay. He wanted the red and white and black. He also wanted the spiders on it, but because you can see how much negative ease it has. I did a 4 by 4 rib, and it just sucks it in. I was afraid that if I sewed the spiders on with the 4 by 4 rib, it just, it would lose this give. So I'm not sewing the spiders on. Sorry, Beck. And what I love the most about this hat is this hat is completely improvised. And I improvised the top decreases as well. And look how awesome that came out. I am so pleased with it. I just used the idea of the basic pattern that I've seen before where you decrease in the purl only and not in the knitting portion. And then once the pearls are completely gone, then you begin decreasing in the knitted part of the rib. And it's just something I've seen in a lot of different hat patterns. 
And so I just tried it for myself, kind of making up my own as I went. I actually made up this whole pattern. I looked up some hat patterns, did some research, figured out how many stitches around I needed, decided I wanted a larger rib than usual. I knew he wanted the red, black, and white, and so I just did an inch stripe of red, an inch stripe of black, inch stripe of white, and then finished it up with red. And so this is Beckman's Spider-Man hat. So big brother gets a hat, little brother gets a hat, dad gets a hat. And if my brother is watching, you're getting another surprise. He is opening his own veterinary eye institute in Dallas in the next month. So I need him an eyeball. How cute is that? It's the gruesome eyeball pattern on Ravelry. And my brother has blue eyes. So I need him a blue eyeball. Congratulations on your upcoming clinic. I'm so proud of you and so excited. And so in your package, you are going to get an eyeball. I hope you love it. You can set it on your desk and let people laugh at your knitted eyeball. All right, so those are some more finished objects. I know I'm counting this as a finished object, even though it's not technically finished, but oh well. Oh, we're about to have a visitor. Come see. Come here. It's probably making the um, laptop move. This is my Weeza. Named after Weeza on Steel Magnolias. She's one of my little chihuahuas. And now that I'm talking to her, the other ones are probably going to come running up here. Normally I have the gate. Don't make me in the face. Normally I have the gate up. We'll get down then if you want to. So they are not allowed up here, but um, she has snuck up here. The gate must be down. Is the baby gate down? Don't touch the computer, but you can stay. So that's my parade of finished objects. So let's talk about some of my works in progress. Not a whole lot has been done on Amy's newest socks. They're kind of a purple zebra stripe pattern. I've gotten another repeat on the Corinne. This is out of Barocco Bobbly yarn. I believe the color is 5312. Yes, it's 5312. Um, muted rainbow is what I'm calling it because it does have all the colors of a rainbow, but they're not real bright. So to me, it's kind of a muted rainbow. And this is one. I'm holding it like this because it will be a vertical garter ridge. So you knit it this way, but it's vertical. So this is the left, probably goes this way. This is the left panel of the sweater. And then lastly, I have made quite a bit of progress on the second of the two Hermione socks. That's just some extra yarn, excuse me. So here's the first of the Hermione's Everyday Socks, and here is the second. So I've made quite a bit of progress on this one. I've done more knitting on this one than some of the other projects. And I was tired of all of this dark yarn. And it's spring outside. It's gorgeous outside here. I can't go outside because of my allergies. So... I'm going to bring spring to me. So I decided to knit one of my friend's little girls, Miss Lily Grace, a beautiful little sweater dress. So this is the baby sweater dress. It's a Lion Brand yarn pattern. And I'm not using the called for yarn. I'm using Bernay Baby Jacquards in the Lemon Pie because it's just, it screams spring to me. And I don't know if you can see how it's supposed to knit up. But it's pretty yellows and blues and greens. And 
her mom and dad just adore the handmade items that I make for her and give her. And so that makes me happy when people love and appreciate the things that I do for them. So Miss Lily Grace is getting a sweater dress. And I'm making it in a size that she can wear it this spring and into the fall as a dress with like bloomers underneath it and um, a little shirt, either short sleeve or long sleeve. Or even in the heat of the summer, she can wear it just by itself with some bloomers. And she's not quite one year old yet, so it'll work great for her this year as a little dress. And then next year, with the size I'm making for, she could wear leggings under it and wear it as a top. So hopefully she'll get two good summer springs out of this little outfit. So again, you can look on the Lion Brand website. It's a free pattern called Baby Sweater Dress. And that's my works in progress for the week. It's knitting, I'm sorry, I'm going back to that. It's knitting up really fast. I started it last night, and that's how much I have done since last night. I haven't knit on it this morning. So that is quite a bit of progress for me. Okay, so now that is the end of my works in progress. So let's talk about fitness. It's spring break for me. I teach, this is our spring break, and I guess I've just decided it was spring break all the way around. I'm taking a break from everything. I haven't been exercising. Um, I've been eating okay, but I just, it's like, I'm on break. I'm going to do what I want. And I really shouldn't have that attitude, I don't think. So anyway, um, I have not been exercising like I should. I have not exercised this week. I did do some yoga um, when I was down on the coast. But since I got back, I haven't really done anything. Eating-wise, though, it was like I had this epiphany with the gluten-free. I did have a day where I ate bread, because that's what the doctor said, to be off gluten for a while and then go back, eat some bread, and see what you feel like. And I really didn't have any symptoms. So what I've decided is I'm probably not gluten allergic. I'm probably just sensitive to it, and it's more like an addiction. I'm eating too much of it. So I have continued, not on a gluten-free diet, but on a gluten-reduced diet, where I'm not eating white bread, um, but I am eating things that are whole grain, whole wheat, um, so better grains and not white processed. I also had this extreme craving when I came back from Biloxi for non-processed foods. I wanted stuff that was fresh and fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, and that is what I have been eating this past week, and it has been wonderful. And then I noticed as well on this journey, y'all know I've been trying to remove as much sugar as possible, and I actually put sugar in my coffee one morning this week and didn't want it. It, it was too sweet. So it may have taken me six or seven weeks to break that addiction, but it is actually broken now. i don't crave that sugar in my coffee anymore. And even though it took me a long time, that had to do with how much I was actually consuming. So I think the longer, it's going to take you longer the more you had. And so the, the bigger that addiction or craving was. So I'm just really pleased with my eating habits this week. And I feel like it's something I'm going to continue without too much um, stress or, or struggle. And that makes me even more excited. So I hope you are all having a much better week fitness-wise, um, exercise-wise, and are having an equally good week eating-wise because I'm just really having a wonderful time. I'm feeling really good, and I think it has a lot to do with the better eating and the non-processed foods and the real foods, the, the healthy foods. So enjoy my FO Parade. Enjoy knitting along with this podcast. I love knitting along with the podcast that I enjoy watching, and I'm glad that I hear so many of you are enjoying knitting along with me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.